Okay. Okay. So I totally forgot to mention this in literally our last recording, but so to, to cap off like the blob, like not feeling great week I was having, I was getting ready and I was like, right, I'm done. I'm going to hop out of here. I like grabbed my phone off the counter and my phone has a case on it normally and it fell in the toilet. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. And so I, I mean, it's fine. Like it, um, that's why you put a case on your phone, but it's yeah. not like a life proof case. Like I normally have. And so I had to like panic for like 10 minutes to make sure my phone was okay, which it is. But I thought that was some funny, like cherry on yeah. top information you might want to know oh my gosh to yes, brighten up course. your week and it always is like that too when you're having like the worst time it's like I'm just gonna let's just do this let's just add this to the list mm-hmm. and it's funny it's like here you go manifestation is real guys because every mm-hmm. time we anytime I use the bathroom here I'm just like it'd be really shitty if my phone fell in the toilet <laughs> right. so don't man don't manifest bad things for yourself okay yeah, I mean, let's be honest, though. I, I mean, I've done that too before. And luckily, thank God, phones nowadays are the most part. I don't think there's any phone that's not waterproof. So, or mostly yeah. waterproof. I mean, Sean, it, yeah. Sean's, our galaxies that we had last time, like um, like a couple years ago, or you know, not even a couple years ago, like a year and a half ago, Sean straight up, his fell into a fucking jacuzzi and worked just fine. <laughs> yeah, there was one time. I think I told you this. We went to the we went to the river. We went tubing with my sister and like her friends when her and Chase were still dating. And I had my phone. I hope that go in my drink. That's nice. Um, <laughs> in like a plastic baggie, right? Yeah. And it fell into the river, and I was like, "Well, it's fucking gone." And her friend dove down, and he found my fucking phone at the bottom of the river, and I was like. Oh my God. And it still worked just fine. I was like, wow. Okay. Wow. He gets brownie points. He must've been yeah. trying to get at you, Darcy. Shout out. Shout out to you, Sheldon. Yeah. He did have a crush on me for a while. His name was Sheldon in college. His name was Sheldon. Sheldon's kind of a baller though. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. When they, when I first met him, they were still in college at NAU. Um, he had a crush on me. And I was like, dude, you're a kid. No, thanks. And so then we had this very like aggressive, like relationship kind of, (laughs) and it was almost kind of like the big sister, annoying little brother kind of thing. Um, Mm -hmm. And then he went through this like fabulous glow up and now he's like this baller adult and he has a great job. He helped me fix my toilet when I, (laughs) when I had moved back, it was He's a cool dude. Uh, shout out to Sheldon. He's a wonderful dude, and he has an amazing girlfriend now. So I'm really happy for him. He has having he's having the time of his life. So I'm very I'm very happy for him. Also, side note, you know, Darcy mentioned her aggressive relationship with him. Let's just say Darcy is an aggressive person when she drinks. Just as a forewarning, um, if anybody ever meets her. So <laughs> I am aggressive. I'm I'm a little bit better now. I've actually gotten better about not getting blackout <laughs> drunk so fast. <laughs> You would be, you would be, but proud it's of me, fun. Shannon. Listen, all I ask, all I ask is you plug my phone in when I'm dead on the couch. That's all and I don't ask. let the, the spaghettios pour all the way down your, your shirt. So Ugh, the spaghettios. And I was so sad about that. Man, I, don't, I can't remember the last time I had spaghettios. Dude, I could, I, I'll fuck with some spaghettios right about now. <laughs> Listen, my inner child. Did you see that post I put on Facebook about the Studio Ghibli thing? No, but pause for a second. Hold on. No worries. It was not an emergency. <clears throat> That's okay. Uh, but yes, so what were you telling me? So, um, huge Studio Ghibli fans in this house. And if you are too, shout out. Uh, put your favorite movie in the comments below and we'll know. But anyway, um, the Studio Ghibli theme park in Tokyo opened on November 1st. Fucking losing my shit. I told my, my inner child like literally vomited from excitement. And I told John, we have to watch every single movie. Otherwise, we can't go. What I didn't tell John is that would be a fabulous place to go for honeymoon. So is it like an anime thing? 
Studio Ghibli. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, you've seen Spirited Away, haven't you? Or like Kiki's Delivery Service or anything like that. Shannon. <laughs> I'm going to disown you. Oh. You've never seen Spirited Away. You've never even heard of it. Mm-hmm. Kiki's Delivery Service, bitch. Okay. Yeah, it's a huge, <laughs> it's, it's not just anime. It's this beautiful like all of the all of the movies that are done by this studio is like it's done by one guy i can't remember his name and i'm not going to go off a tangent on it but it's like painted like watercolor painted artworks like it's just gorgeous like i think Net- no netflix doesn't have it who does it there's a studio ghibli collection fucking somewhere shit who has it anyway doesn't matter it's fa- oh it's on disney plus I don't know how it's on oh. Disney Plus, but you can watch the Studio Ghibli collections on Disney Plus. And I mean, obviously my favorite forever is Spirited Away, but like to- like my friend Totoro is on there, Kiki's Delivery Service. They're so cute. They're like feel good movies and like just to just a synopsis. So Spirited Away is basically about this little girl, her family, they're moving to a different part of the country. It's way out in the countryside. They kind of get lost on the way up to their house and they end up in an abandoned amusement park. Hmm. and all of a sudden they smell food and her parents are eating all this food she's like wait there's nobody here like what's happening and her parents turn into pigs and shit gets wild so her parents turn into pigs she's like i don't know what's happening and now there's this big like river running between her and leaving so now she can't leave now she's scared she doesn't know what to do all these weird spirits start showing up and this boy saves her and he's like okay we have to hide you from what's her name she's like the lady who runs the bathhouse and then um they, the the chick's voice uh who who um she befriends in the bathhouse she's like this older girl and um she befriends this woman is the same voice i believe that's megara in hercules so i think it's the same english voice anyway and um personality too it's pretty baller and it's just a really fun movie and it's super super funny it's super good and um Oh yeah. So they did it and it's basically, she has to win her parents' freedom to no longer be pigs and not be stuck there and they can leave. Right. And the person, like when he wrote the story, they're like, well, what inspired you to write this story? And he was like, I got the inspiration from my, my friends, my really good friends, 10 year old daughter. Like it's kind of like a coming of age story a little bit. And it's about this girl and you follow her around. It's a really cute story. I mean, you should really, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't know that about you. Um, that's right. We'll, we'll fix <laughs> okay. you. So, uh, fun fact, uh, people out there, please don't judge me too much for this, but like, so big things that like, I guarantee I've probably watched or anything like sci-fi fantasy, like vampire related, anything like that for sure. I've seen, I'm one of those nerds hundred percent. I'm the opposite. It's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But anyway, yeah, totally but, opposite. Not totally, but like in terms of like the genres that you really fell for. Like I wasn't a Twilight nerd. Like I fuck fuck Twilight. I don't care oh, about Harry it. Potter all the way too. You know that all all that. I wasn't there so go, much like, like Twilight. You know, because like I didn't really read the books, so I was like, nee. I mean, of course, everybody like was like, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, Edward Cullen and what's his face, is it Jake or something? I don't know. He was you know hot the Jacob. cute one, Jacob. Yeah you know, back then, you know, cause we were in high school. So, you know, I watched them because they were, there was hot dudes on them at the time. So, but it wasn't <laughs> like I read the books, like Harry Potter's story, you know, where it's like, I know the pretty much yeah. anything and everything related to that. But yeah. But yeah, I'll have to look into it. I know, like I have plenty of people too around me. They're like, Oh, you don't like, have you never seen like anime or anything like that? I'm like, I've ne- the furthest I've ever gotten into anime ever was like, you know, remember the old like Nickelodeon show avatar? So, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the only thing I've re- like really ever got into. And that's okay. I'm not judging you, but I'm, I'm judging the fact that you don't know Studio Ghibli at all, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, oh, cool. But anyway, it's baller, but anything I'll like send it to you and I'll hound you till you watch. Anyway, so we're going <laughs> to <laughs> jump right into it. Um, uh, Let's say hello to everybody. Hair in over my mouth. So if you're new here, welcome. It's great to have you. Welcome to the Psych Ward. Um, 
We are trying to hit a goal by the end of the year of a thousand downloads. If we can hit it sooner, that'd be great. Um, besides the fact that we love to see the podcast grow, Podbean gives you a fun little badge and we really want the badge. <laughs> so <laughs> we're trying to corral everybody to pan together and, you know, listening on any platform you listen to on is a huge help to the show. But if you're able to download an episode um, or like recommend it to friends and everybody and, you know, your support goes a really long way. And we really appreciate everyone who listens, whether you're brand new here for the first time or you've been with us since the very beginning. Um, I've asked time and time again, and I'll ask it again. However you discovered us, let us know in the comments or send us a message or an email or a pigeon. I don't care. We want to know how you found us, especially places like Australia and India and shit. Like, it's surprising. So we want to say welcome to everybody. So welcome to everyone in the United Kingdom, India, Russia, Bul I was about to put two countries together. Sorry. Belgium, Bulgaria, Jamaica, Italy, El Salvador, Sweden, Nigeria, Australia, Albania, Canada, Cuba, Germany, Spain, Mexico, Norway, the Philippines, and South Africa. So welcome, welcome. And it's happy. We're happy to have you if you're a returning patient. Um, in the U.S., Hello to everyone in California, Florida, Washington, Georgia, Illinois, New York, Texas, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Colorado, Nevada, Kansas, Michigan, South Carolina, Wisconsin, Virginia, Arizona, Kentucky, North Carolina, Utah, Indiana, Massachusetts, Maryland, Minnesota, Montana, Rhode Island, District of Columbia, Iowa, New, New Mexico, <clears throat> Ohio, and Oklahoma. We're happy to have all of you here, new and old alike. And we're going to go ahead and jump right into part two of um, the Manson family murders. So ooh, ooh, I hope you guys are super ready because this took just as much effort to pull together as the first half did. Um, I'm excited. I mean, I was I learned a lot the first time, so I'm assuming I'm going to learn a whole lot more. Yeah, we're going to make ready. you really depressed. So. <laughs> We're going to make you really depressed and we're going to kind of, it's going to not be rapid fire, but there's going to be, um, there's a lot to cover between the murders themselves and the actual trial and the aftermath. So I wanted to give each of them enough um, in between. So to recap where we left off, Manson had a bunch of problems growing up. He spent his entire life in reform schools and basically in and out of jail. He doesn't really know how to function in society. And he told people that, and people just thought he was misunderstood. Um, his first wife left him. He named his son Charles Manson Jr., who would go on to change his name later, like rightfully so. And then we ended up with Helter Skelter, which just to bring us all back together, if it's the first time listening to this, go back. <laughs> go back to episode yeah. 29 and catch up. It's fun. But Helter Skelter was basically the apocalyptic race war where Black people rise up, kill all the white people, except for the Manson family, who's going to be, and I was right, it was Death Valley. They end up in some underground safe haven in death valley once the apocalypse is over they're going to come out and they're going to reign over the black people because apparently they're smart enough to kill everyone but they're not smart enough to govern themselves it's safe to say charles manson was uh maybe a smidgen racist i don't know um oh, just a tad <laughs> just a tad um and well, we were joking about the drugs. So part of their preparation, just so you know, for Helter Skelter, was stockpiling drugs. So oh, well, you know, that. at least you planned ahead. So at least you planned ahead. So but where did all the drugs are still go? in? Don't know. They probably got confiscated when they got raided, but we're going to get there. <laughs> um, I was like, because like, did they find the compound? Okay, I know. We'll get the. We'll get, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. So just some. Um, Interesting facts um, I learned. I did some more research after <clears throat> we ended the last time just because I wanted to learn some more stuff. Did you know the moon landing was two weeks before the Manson family murders? And then a week oh. after the Manson family murders, um, fuck, what was it? It was something monumental. Shit. <laughs> I lost it. It was like, this really thing with this other thing. Oh, Woodstock. There we go. So two oh, weeks before the Manson murders. You need to put like a little like, light bulb. But... <laughs> I'll see if I can figure that out. If I'll see yes, how edit that in there, get. please. It's just like you know, it's just like the 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 fumes just coming out of Darcy's brain trying to figure it out. And then <laughs> yes, we'll do that. So two weeks before the murders, moon landing. One week after Woodstock. Bam. 
So like <laughs> it was a heck this podcast I listened to and I can't remember the name of them. I'm sorry. Um, they, it, I just listened to it for fun, but that piece stuck with me. And he's like, that was a really hectic month for the United States. And I was like, yeah, a little bit. It was, it was a lot for them at that time. I'm sure. <laughs> there was a lot happening. There was just so much going on. Makes, makes nowadays look okay. a little boring. <laughs> yeah. So July 27th of 1969, there's Bobby Boussoulet. Susan Adkins and Mary Brunner killed Gary Hinman for a drug deal gone wrong. So Bobby Boussoulet gets arrested basically for this crime. It's it Manson was there. They show up. They wanted their money from Gary Hinman. He owed the money for drugs. He didn't have the money. He offered them like, here's my car. Here's this. Here's that. Like he offered them a bunch of shit that would have paid off his debt. But Manson was like, no, like you basically he had to show his authority, right? Like I just this is not how you're gonna pay your debt to me. And so he tells them, he's like, you know what to do. Like that's kind of what I was talking about beforehand, where he doesn't tell people to do things directly. He just kind of puts it in their head. And so he's like, Oh, you know what to do. And then he leaves. And so Bobby Boussoulet and Susan Adkins and Mary Brown are just like the girls would take turns like suffocating him with a pillow while Bobby like beat the shit out of him and I ultimately think he shot him so Gary Hemming dies and Bobby in his blood writes political piggy and puts a paw print with his blood Bobby's not Bobby's um Gary's blood on the walls in hopes the police would think that it was the work of the Black Panthers. Here's what I will say. We talk a lot about how much the police fuck up in a lot of these cases uh-huh. and how it's like they're racially motivated. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Not once during these Manson murders do the police believe that it's Black people killing these people. They don't think it's the Black Panthers. It's just super opposite because that's exactly what the Manson family was trying to do was to make the police think that it was the work of the Black Panthers to start Helter Skelter. And it never happened, which I always found was very ironic compared to yeah. how it normally plays out. They were just trying way too hard. Yeah, it's the no effort for me that you have to yeah. make it work out, you know? Yeah, literally, just it's what racist... it is. Like, when you're not, when you're actually not trying to be that is when they think that it is that. Yeah, it's like, just let the racist white people just do their thing. They'll get there eventually. You just got to let them do it. <laughs> well, good. So I'm anyway. glad to hear at least this time, this time, it was seen appropriately yeah. for what it was. Right. So, he kills this guy. He does this stuff in hopes of whatever what he doesn't know is that he's left fingerprints of the crime scene and he also takes gary hendon's car because he gave him his car keys they put an apb out for this car um and 10 days after the murder they see the car they pull the car over and bobby's in the car they take bobby in they run his fingerprints and what do you know they match so they arrest bobby for the murder of gary now bobby's in jail and manson's a little concerned because he's like What if he talks to the police? And what if he tells them that I was there? I don't want to go back to jail, blah, 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 blah. So he wants Bobby out of jail or he wants Bobby dead. So that's kind of his plan. Mm -hmm. And also we're getting to the end of summer. Helter Skelter hasn't started yet. He's like, I'm a prophet. My people can't lose faith in me. So we need to kickstart it. So it's, I think it was half he wanted to kickstart it. The other half was he wanted to get the police to stop looking into Gary Hinman's murder and talking to Bobby and focusing on more high profile murders. So he was like, we have to kill somebody famous. We have to kill people with notoriety. That's what we have to do. So he corrals a team and August 9th is the night. He doesn't tell anyone but Tex. So Charles Watson, aka Tex, is his nickname because he's from Texas. So clever. Um, And he tells him, he convinces him to think of the murder. He plants it in his mind, like, don't you want to do that? And the only reason why they go to um, this Yellow Drive house, the Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski house, is because I had mentioned before it was the previous house of um what's his name the the producer guy i forgot his name um that's the only reason why they go there and he's like well you have to be rich to afford this house so whoever is in there must be rich 
um, and they decide they're going to kill everyone in that house. So August 9th, Tex Watson, Susan Adkins, Patricia Krenwinkel, and Linda Sabian pull up to 11050 Cielo Drive to the home of Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski. They had with them ropes, knives, and a revolver. Um, Watson cuts the phone lines, and then they all jump the wall to get into the house. So they park down the hill. They come over. He cuts the phone lines. They jump the wall. And as they jump the wall, um, someone's coming down the driveway to leave, and it's Stephen Perrins. Stephen Perrins was actually on his way out. He actually wasn't associated with anybody in the house. He was actually there to see the groundskeeper, like the guy who lived in the guest house, because he was trying to sell him a clock. And this is important because they say when he was trying to show him his clock prototype, he plugged it in and it stopped at 1215 a.m. And he unplugged it. That's where the clock stopped. And he had it in his car on the way out. And that's when they found it in his car. So they assume these murders started between 1215 and 1230 or after 1215 in the morning. So he's coming down the hill. He gets to the gate and he's getting ready to leave. But his headlights like catch the people that had just now hopped the wall these four people um he freezes he doesn't know what's happening and watson comes up to him he's got his revolver out and steven is like pleading for his life he's like i won't say anything i never saw you i don't know who you are like i'm just i'm literally leaving and watson's like i don't give a shit so he pulls at his revolver and he shoots him four times and effectively kills him and that to me is like the utmost definition of wrong place at the wrong time i know i thought at first you were going to tell me that he managed to get away like he was like the one survivor you know what i mean Darn. no the one survivor would actually end up being the housekeeper um and we're actually going to get to that in a second so they kill steven and they go up to the house they're looking for a, a way to enter all the windows are shut Except for one, which is why you always shut your shit. <laughs> if there's an easy way in, people will find it. Mm-hmm. So they find a window. Stephen cuts the screen off of the window. Um, and everyone climbs through except Kasabian. He tells Kasabian he wants her to watch for cars or any oncoming whatever and sends her back to the gate. So she's not in with everybody else. Um, Fakowski was one of the guests in Sharon Tate's home at the time. He was sleeping on the couch. Um, and Wilson's like, or Watson is like, hey, go check the other rooms. He's sending the other two off to go check the other rooms. It wakes up um, Krakowski and Watson kicks him in the head. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? And kicks him in the head. And he says, I am the devil and I'm here to do the devil's business. That's like his, that's like a classic quote that he's known for saying. Hmm. So he ties up Krakowski and then Watson has the others tie up everybody else and bring them into the living room. Um, and he ties up. So Jay is another, um, person on this list. Where is it? His name is Jay Sebring and he's an ex-boyfriend of, um, Sharon Tate, but they stayed friends. Like he was like a famous hairdresser. They stayed really good friends. He came over that night because she was used to having friends over and keeping her company, especially because Roman Polanski was in Europe like shooting a film he wasn't even home and so he's there they're all there and he comes out and watson decides he's going to tie a rope around jay's neck and he throws it over um the beam in the living room and then he puts the other side of the rope and he ties around sharon tate's neck so they're kind of like you know what i mean like they're tied over this thing they're they're they can't really go anywhere without right pulling the other choking right so sharon's now you know crying she's like what the hell is happening um and he starts to like scream at sharon to like shut up quit talking he doesn't like to see her cry it's really annoying because he's like women should obey men blah 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 and so jay's like yo man like that's my fucking friend like can't you see she's pregnant like leave her alone like let her go and this pisses him off so he decides to shoot him in the stomach. So he shoots him in the stomach and then he stabs him seven times until he dies uh, in front of everybody. So everybody in this house has been traumatized by watching the brutality happen to Jay. And they're all like, oh shit, that's going to be us if we don't do anything. 
So Watson tells um, Adkins, he's like, you're going to kill Fukowski. But Fukowski wiggles free from his bindings and he attempts to make a run for it to the front door. He's fighting with um, Adkins to get the knife away from him. He like knocks her to the ground, but then she ends up like, I don't know if she tackles him. I don't know if she just catches him, but she like stabs him in the legs as he's trying to run away, like in both legs, like multiple times. But he ends up getting through the front door and he collapses and like stumbles into the front yard, right? Mm -hmm. Um, That's when Watson comes out and basically gets on top of him and stabs him 51 times. Good until Lord. he dies. Yeah, that's when um, I think it was was it Krenwinkel that I said it was. Do, 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 do. Hold on, I just want to make sure. Kasabian. So Kasabian's coming up because she hears someone screaming. So she's coming up the driveway, and that's when Kasabian watches Watson like stabbing Frakowski to death, and it freaks her out. And she's like, oh my God. And this is a, a bit, a pivotal moment because it's because of this like moment of appropriate emotional reaction that actually saves the groundskeeper's life. Mm-hmm. Um, so we now have Jay is dead. We have Fakowski is dead. Abigail Folger, and yes, she was the heiress to the Folger Coffee Company, was also there. Uh, she's the second one to break free. So as you can tell, their binding skills are shit. So she breaks free and she makes a run for it. And Krenwinkel's like, no, no, no. And tackles her in the yard as well. And she stabs her 28 times until she dies in the front yard as well. Now all that's left is Sharon Tate. So Adkins um, is told that she has to kill Sharon. Sharon's losing her mind. She's like pleading for her baby's life. She was like, please, like just you know, hold me hostage. And when my baby is born, then you can kill me. And they were like, we don't really care. Like, we don't care about your pleas. Like, we don't give a shit about you. And um, Adkins stabs her 16 times until her and her unborn baby are dead. She would be found with one of her breasts actually cut off. I don't know if that was intentional or if that was just due to the brutality of the stabbings. And then they also slashed a giant X on her stomach. Um, so her, uh, do you know how many months yeah, like her, pregnant she was? She was eight months pregnant at the time. Oh God, yeah. So she was, that baby would have lived. Yeah. So once the murders are done, um they remembered manson was like write something like do something witchy he said to do something witchy which i'm like don't don't bring witches into this but whatever um they take the blood from whoever i don't know if it was sharon if it was rakowski i'm sure it was just a combination of blood on the floor they write the words pig um on the walls before they left and then they get all into the car and they toss all of their clothes and all of their weapons down a hill, which is important later on because it ends up in somebody's yard. And then they go to some other person's house, like a couple doors down, and they start like hosing themselves off in his yard. And he t- he takes down their license plate, which I'm sure comes up later in court when they start questioning people when the weapons are found. So they're um, like literally using a stranger's hose naked. Yeah. In this like gated Hollywood community. Yeah. I guess it wasn't nice. gated, but whatever. I mean, yeah. I'm sure that's so not the first time naked. somebody's decided to hose themselves down naked, but can you just yeah. like, imagine that like on like your ring camera? <laughs> like nowadays. I hope they were drunk. <laughs> I mean, like I've peed in someone's yard when I was really drunk. So <laughs> but, like <laughs> if ring cameras were a thing when I was doing that, someone got my bare butt. So, no shame. No shame in nope. this game, baby. You gotta go, you gotta go. Um, <laughs> especially when you're drinking. So, especially when you're drinking. Um, Garretson is the name of the groundskeeper. He's the only one to survive because Abigail um, did not check the guest house. So, as I said, Kasabian 
was freaked out. She did not want to partake in anything like this, even though she knew what she was like, he told them like Watson was like, we're going to kill everybody inside this house. I don't think she was prepared for the reality of that. And she didn't want to partake in any more people being slaughtered. So when Watson was like, go check the guest house, make sure there's nobody else here. She pretended to check the guest house, which is where Garretson lived. And she's like, there's nobody else here. And that's the only reason why he survived was because she did not actually check the guest house. Um, August 10th, so the very next day, um, Manson is not pleased with what they have done. And um, he decides that the police's reaction isn't what he wanted. You know, he was like, they were supposed to think it was the Black Panthers. They were supposed to blame them. It was supposed to start the race war. Like they weren't given the appropriate reaction that he wanted. So he's like, well, we are going to have to do it again. He's like, and I'll go with you because you obviously didn't do it right. So we're going to do it right this time. So this time he takes Leslie Van Houten, Stephen Gordon, Susan Adkins, Linda Kasabian, Patricia Krenwinkel, and Tex Watson. So there's two new names to the list, but he brings them all um, to this next killing. And he so just you know what? decides I don't to stop though. it. All. Really quick though. Huh. What I don't understand is why did that one chick who decided not to check the guest house decide, oh, I'm just going to try this again, I guess. Like, I don't think, okay, so what happens when they get back, I mean, on the car right there, like, they obviously, they were talking about it. They weren't, like, being remorseful. They were just kind of like, my arm hurts. Like, I'm sticky and, like, all the stupid weird shit. But they, you know, they get back the airport to Charles. And he was very big on, like, you all have to participate in the killings next time. And, I mean, they were, they weren't pleased with her performance. But he had her go check the guest house i mean they don't know that she didn't actually not check it they assumed that she did just to kind of give her something to do but i think it was like a redemption thing for her like they didn't know that she had different feelings like they were like emotionless they didn't care and yet she's free thinking when she's not supposed to be free thinking right like charles thinks for you he emotions for you so you shouldn't have remorse for the people that you're killing and she did and she wasn't going to say that because then it's challenging her faith to the family and challenging charles and you have to remember like he convinced all of these women that he was the only person that could ever love them only person that could ever understand them and saying that i i had different feelings than your wishes is pretty a pretty upsetting thing for him to hear so it was yeah. i think in her mind a way to kind of redeem herself and not be basically kicked to the curb essentially i guess you know it's just a shame though girl's got to, girl's got to stand up for herself yeah she, and had, she had the right mindset didn't execute well you know if you if you stand up for yourself you're probably not going to end up in a cult <laughs> That's yeah. the whole point of why she had she had a shred. There. She had a shred of what was left of like her dignity of like the you know standing her up for yes. herself, and that's pretty much it. Yep, I mean that comes back later in the trial. Casabian plays a huge part in the trial. Um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with what her reward was, but we'll get there. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna. Okay, we're gonna jump into this. So he stops outside of this house. He decides that he picks this house at random and it's the home of Leno and Rosemary LaBianca. They were completely chosen at random, which makes it more like sinister in my mind. Like he just picked it because he thought that this house was nice. They weren't like famous. They weren't rich. They were, you know, upper middle class. Like like Leno, he had a successful grocery store um business going and rosemary owned a boutique and they were just like living their life you know they were great parents they their kids were grown and they were just like enjoying you know their middle age essentially and according to manson apparently there's a bunch of different versions of the story but according to manson here's how everything went down which is interesting because he incriminates himself but whatever so he says him and tex watson tie up the couple so leno is sleeping on the couch in the living room when they enter the home Rosemary's in the bedroom. They tie up Leno. They go get Rosemary. They tie her up in the bedroom. They're actually not in the same room. And they tied them up. And then he has them brought into the same room. And then he's like, we're just going to rob you. This is, if you cooperate, we'll let you go. We won't hurt you. Fine. 
they tell them where all their stuff is. They're like, you can take whatever you want. And then Manson's like, great. So he takes all their valuables, him and Tex like leave the house. And then he, and then Manson tells Van Houten and Krenwinkel to go actually murder the couple inside. So he's like, okay, now go inside and actually kill these people. And then he leaves. And then Manson like leaves the scene because he's not going to be there for it, right? Um, after Manson leaves, Watson would actually go back inside and he would assist in the murders of these people. So Watson goes inside and he stabs Leno repeatedly before assisting the other two women in the room with Rosemary. And they stab Rosemary 41 times between the three of them. Then Watson goes back and stabs Leno a few more times. Then Krenwinkel carves the word. By, by the way, like Leno is dead at this point. It, I feel like I need to say that because what's about to happen to him is pretty brutal. So he's already dead. And then Krenwinkel carves the word war into his stomach. You said um, war? War. W-A-R. Uh, uh, war. Okay. Yeah. Um, carves into his stomach. And then she stabs him some more times. And then she leaves a carving fork, like, protruding from his throat. I'm sorry, from his stomach. And then she just leaves a knife in his throat, like a kitchen knife in his throat. Um, And then, ultimately, Leno would be stabbed 26 times, uh, ultimately, and left mutilated. And then they would write the words, death to pigs and rise in his blood on the walls. And then... um, I think it was Adkins wrote Helter Skelter on the fridge in the kitchen. So that's the LaBianca murders. Just because I like to make sure that the victims have a moment. uh, Just so everyone knows the impact of the Manson murders is there were eight victims and last last episode i had said and one of them was the unborn baby another one of them is the unborn baby so they talk about the eight victims and the unborn child so nine if you count sharon tate's baby so the victims of the manson murders were sharon tate 26 abigail folger who was 25 it was actually two days before her birthday Hmm. um we had oh i'm gonna butcher his name wrote rojic wojic uh, we had Frakowski, he was 32. Jay Seberg was 36. Stephen Parent was only 18 years old. Gary Hinman was 35 years old. And then Leno was 44 and Rosemary uh, LaBianca was 40. So all of the victims of the Manson murders. So what happened then? And there in 1969 on September 1st, so not long, um, not long after the Manson murders within a month, um, a 10-year-old boy, he found a 22 caliber revolver under a bush near his home. Uh, he told his parents, and his parents would go on to notify the police, but the police at that time would fail to connect that revolver to the Tate and LaBianca murders. We now call them the Manson family murders or the Sharon Tate murders, um, but at the time, police didn't know that the Tate murders and the LaBianca murders were connected, so... They were treated as separate cases, and then during trial would be called the Tate and LaBianca murders. Um, In October, officers raid the Barker Ranch in Death Valley, and they arrest 24 members of the Manson family, two of those members being Charles Manson himself and Susan Adkins, uh, which is important because it's kind of what ends up being their downfall. So November 6th of 1969, Susan um, begins to brag to Virginia Graham, who's also another inmate at the time, uh, about her involvement in the Tate murders. She also mentions a list of other celebrities that the family had planned to kill, including um, Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, Tom Jones, Steve McQueen, and Frank Sinatra were also on their list. Um, She would tell Virginia about what was disturbing to me is she bragged to Virginia about um, Sharon Tate's pleas to, you know, oh, just hold me hostage and let my baby live and like all that kind of stuff. She just really went into detail about that piece, which I thought was pretty dark. Um, This inmate, Virginia Graham, told another inmate and 
he would go on to tell investigators. And so overall, Susan's kind of jailhouse confession would end up reaching um, detectives and authorities at some point. At the same time, this information is coming to investigators. Another set of investigators, because like I said, at the time, both cases were treated separately. They were uh, investigating the LaBianca murders and they were interviewing someone named Al Springer. And he was a member of the Straight Satan Bikers. Um, Manson had tried to recruit him into the family uh, in the past, very recently, and it didn't work. Uh, but he did enjoy hanging out uh, with the Mansons because, you know, access to women and drugs and such and such. Um, Al went on to tell the detectives that Manson bragged to him about the LaBianca murders back in August uh, when they were at Spawn Ranch. And detectives' ears perked up when Al had told them that Manson mentioned the take killings and that somebody wrote the words, uh, wrote on the refrigerator in blood the word pigs which is obviously the LaBianca murders not the Tate murders but they're like oh he's mentioning something we didn't release to the public so their peak their interest is now peaked in what he had to say mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be until Danny DiCarlo who was another member of the straight Satan gang that would actually bridge the connection for investigators that the two cases are linked so he tells them because they bring him in for questioning that the family bragged about uh, we got five piggies was something that they had told him. And then Manson had also had asked him how to decompose a body. Um, and so they were like, okay, this is information that we need to know. And I don't know if this is what prompts, no, this isn't what prompts it. Just kidding. I'm backtracking. Anyway. So now they're like, okay, so maybe these murders are linked. And that's when the two kind of converge. So things are going to kind of speed up. Um, we're now in November. We were just, well, we're still in November. We're a few days ahead. So now we're in November 18th. Things kind of start to go rapid fire. So this is a little bit where rapid fire is going to go into play. They've linked the two murders. They're like, okay, the Manson family is involved in both of these murders. Who all is involved? How are they all involved? And they need to figure it out. So on November 18th, Vincent Bugliosi, I hope I said that right. Um, he would be appointed the chief prosecutor for the Tate Labian case. Um, I didn't put down any names of the other attorneys because there were a bunch of them and I don't really care. So one day after this, so November 19th, he's actually a part of the search of the spa ranch where they find 22 caliber bullets and 22 caliber shell casings um, and they bring them in for evidence. And then on November 20th, uh, he's also a part of the search of the Barker Ranch in Death Valley, and that's like where everybody was arrested. Um, after Susan's confession finally reaches uh, investigators, they decide to interview all of the other Manson members that they have incarcerated, and they find the main five involved in these murders, which, as we know, are Susan Adkins, Patricia Krenwinkel, Leslie Von Houten, Linda Karras, Linda Kasabian and Charles Tex Watson, excluding Charles Manson himself, right? But these were the ones involved in the murders. Mm -hmm. um, Van Houten was uh, picked up for questioning in California. Krenwinkel was arrested in Alabama and Watson was arrested in Texas. And then Kasabian would voluntarily turn herself in uh, to the police in New Hampshire. So they were kind of all spread out, but they all got picked up eventually. The DA ends up striking a deal with Adkins lawyer uh, for her testimony because they knew that in order to get anywhere with this case, they were going to need testimony from people inside the family, um, which they already knew was going to be difficult in itself because it's hard to get people to turn when they're in a cult. And so they needed to plan ahead. So they made a deal with her lawyer and they were like, hey, for her testimony before a grand jury we will um, not seek the death penalty for her and we will consider reducing her charges as she cooperates further with the case. So she takes the deal and on December 5th, she stands before the grand jury and she testifies to the events that took place on the night of August 9th and obviously the night of August 10th. Um, and she says, and I quote, she was in love with the reflection of Charles and there was no limit to what she would do for him. 
And then only after 20 minutes of deliberation, the grand jury returns uh, with murder indictments against Manson, Watson, Krenwinkel, Atkins, Kasabian, and Van Housen. So nothing happens until 1970. So months pass, and June 15th of 1970, jury selection finally begins <clears throat> for the trial against the four members already in custody in California. Why does it take so long, you ask? <clears throat> because they were still waiting on Watson's extradition from Texas to California, and it was just getting bogged down and delayed as soon as possible. Uh, hold on one second. There's someone at my door. <laughs> Aw. Anyway. Moving on. So as I said, jury selection taking place. They're waiting on his extradition from Texas. Nothing is happening. So like, we're just going to go ahead and continue. We're going to continue with the trial. So we don't care. We'll wait. We are not going to wait. So jury selection begins on June 15th against the, the, the four members currently in California custody. Um, Manson asks if he can speak to the jury selection people. Um, he says, and I quote, he doesn't ask, a few simple childlike questions that are real to me in my reality. I don't know what that means, um, yeah. but as you can guess, the judge was like, no, <laughs> you can't. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, so now we're in July. So after about a month of jury selection, the final verdict for the jury selection is done. Um, and while they were made aware that, hey, this trial is probably going to take a little while because of how many people have to go on trial, they did not expect the trial was actually going to take 225 days. Jesus. Yeah. So a long trial. And I'm not going to get into it because I have some fun facts about it. I don't want to ruin it. So July 24th, opening statements take place and Manson decides to walk into the courtroom with a fresh, bloody x right in the middle of his forehead um and they his reason for this is he said i have x myself from your world i don't know what that means i can only assume it's a it's a power thing and like well i've decided that this doesn't apply to me so therefore i am not guilty I'm like that's not how it works but okay yeah no no it's like maybe for like the wow factor of it you know because i know that was like that's like one of the iconic where people like know who Manson is with that picture of the X on his forehead. Yeah. One second. I'm going to disconnect and reconnect my headphones because when I got up, it was super hard to hear. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, that was pulling my headphones. Yeah. So, you know, Charles trying to manipulate the whole situation. So he does that on the first day of testimony. Vincent um told the court uh that his principal witness would drum wall be no one other than linda kasabian herself um she was actually this is where i had mentioned earlier of like i don't know if i necessarily agree with the deal that she did but they struck a deal with linda kasabian for her for her testimony against the manson family she would get full immunity um from any charges on the case yeah, that's a little fucked. I thought it was just supposed to be like reduced, not full immunity. Yeah, so that's what Adkins got. So Adkins is basically what got them the murder indictments because she was having fun bragging. And like she didn't realize until later in the trial that she was actually doing more harm than good, but whatever. And so she gets off of the death penalty and is potentially able for a reduced sentence. I mean, she would stop cooperating relatively quickly after that and mm -hmm. then Kasabian is the one that actually ends up striking a deal and I think the reason is because Kasabian willingly turned herself in and was like I want to turn state's witness yeah and so they so. offer her full immunity oh yeah wasn't she I mean, one of the ones was she the one that, was she the one that like was she the one that let the groundskeeper go mm -hmm. oh. I was gonna say if she's one of the ones that like stabbed people fifty thousand times, then I'd be like, "Fuck she, that." She was a part of the LaBianca murders. I don't remember. I think I believe she was one of the ones that had to like she had to part participate in the LaBianca murders, but she didn't end up actually physically harming anyone in the Tate murders. Not that it was okay because she right. was there knowing full well what they were doing when they got there, 
Um, and she was their lookout and she was ready to participate, I think up until she saw what was actually happening. So yeah, okay. there was nothing that she had to deal with, which I think is still wrong. Yeah. So July 27th, Kasabian takes the stand uh, again and Manson's lawyer immediately, as soon as she's sworn in to take her the stand uh, to witness, he objects and he says, object your honor on the grounds this witness is not competent and is insane um to which the judge dismisses his objection um and i'm kind of like i don't know i mean i kind of like that hurt his case a little bit because i'm like okay so you're gonna say that this person is insane the prosecution is like yeah they're they're they were insane because he manipulated them so i feel like that in turn like helped him like I get where his defense lawyer his defense later on goes on to be like these people committed it of a totally different reason but I don't know anyway so he objects and the judge is like no she can she can testify Mm -hmm. so she does her testimony uh she would be on trial or on the stand for 18 days and seven of those days she was being cross-examined by Manson's lawyer so that's in a very intense 18 days you can imagine she got death threats she got threats from the family Uh, Manson was even asked there's a a video of him being asked in the courtroom like do you have anything to say to Linda like do you have anything to say he's like why would I he's like why do I care about what Linda's doing he's like I don't care what she's doing like he seemed so like blase about it but I'm like inside he's not blase about it like I don't think he's blase. also like I don't agree with like how they did that like why would they ask him what he thinks of her why does that matter like to, and if anything that just I don't know like I wouldn't have put her on the spot like that mm-hmm. well obviously because they want to talk to Manson the mastermind behind the brainwashing right right I guess but it's almost like ooh, like are you gonna like try to like like how do you feel about that are you gonna do something about that because she's in front of you right now like staring at you like yeah I don't know it, that'd be, exactly. that'd have been a tough thing to watch I think yeah, and they're in the courtroom. Like he's at the table. Like, yeah. and, and someone asks him that. It's like fucking weird. It's just, it's a really weird thing. Like, he just seems like so unfazed by it. He's like, I don't really care. But again, I also feel like that's a very disassociated, right? I'm gonna distance myself from what actually happened to make myself look less at fault. Right, which really actually looks almost worse because then it makes him just look even that much more crazy too. Mm -hmm. because you'd almost expect him to be like irate and like screaming at her or whatever like trying to like get to her like because she's the one telling all basically so yeah Mm -hmm. and then it just kind of gets worse as the case goes on because all of the women's because all the women have a lawyer everyone has a lawyer which is why I didn't keep names because I'm not going to keep up with them and I don't expect anyone else to keep up with them um and that kind of comes up later on and We'll get we'll get there, which is again, it doesn't help the case, but whatever. So August 3rd. Um, Manson decides in the middle of testimony. So I think it was like during testimony while Kasabian's on the sand, he stands up in the middle of court uh, with a copy of a new a New York Times newspaper in big letters that reads, Manson guilty Nixon declares, um, in front of the whole court. And the defense, he his defense attorney, whatever, he like asks the the judge that can we dismiss this on a mistrial on the grounds the newspaper could provide or cause prejudice with the jury against the defense (laughs) yeah and i think that that was planned i totally think his defense lawyer was totally about that like how oh yeah for sure because yeah they can't argue that because if that's the thing about like courts and like going and doing like the grand jury stuff is that like there has to be a guarantee that it's not going to be a biased thing so the second he brought that out it was going to be biased yeah so you're like oh shit he's trying to get this whole thing knocked by a mistrial right yeah the judge denies his request for a mistrial after he has each and every juror take the stand and swear that they would not be influenced by the the New York Times headline. So after they all were like, I will not, I will not, I will not. He was like, nope, sorry, we're continuing on with this trial. <laughs> it's kind of like, fuck you, we're going forward. Good. <laughs> yeah. 
So over the next few weeks, few days, um, more witnesses testify. This includes Virginia Graham, the inmate that uh, Adkins has spoke to. Also Paul Wadkins, who I hadn't mentioned before, but Paul Wadkins was also a member of the family who would recruit women for Charles Manson's family. So that was his big role. And he testified and he talked a lot about Helter Skelter and Charles's big philosophy around it and so basically more about like this shit's fucked <laughs> like just so you guys know so that was yeah. his big role in that one witness in particular was Barbara Hoyt she was 17 years old and she was persuaded she was supposed to take the stand and testify against the family she was a family member uh she was persuaded by members of the family obviously outside um that they would welcome her back into the family and they would forgive her. Um, if she agreed not to testify, they would also take her on a trip to Hawaii. And so she was like, okay. So she decides to not testify. She goes on this trip to Hawaii. But while she's in Hawaii, they put a lethal amount of LSD into her hamburger and try to kill her. She ends up in the road and this nice like social worker passerby finds her and actually gets her to a hospital where she gets is basically saved like she doesn't die and when she's ready she calls the prosecution and she's like so total jk i want to come and testify now like i'm <laughs> totally fine testifying. like they tried to kill me with a hamburger so <laughs> yeah they were trying to Let's make it a trip this. of a lifetime for sure yes <laughs> so she ends up testifying in the prosecution like Vincent will go on to say he was like that was clear proof that they were trying to silence a witness yeah yeah so, it's one so hell of a trip from a hamburger <laughs> hamburger from hell if you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so uh now it's November 16th and the prosecution finally rests their case after 22 weeks of trial the prosecution finally rests its piece of the, of the trial. Three days later, it's November 19th, trial resumes uh, while the defense, with the defense stating it's a total like shocker to the entire court, the defense says the defense rests. They don't call any witnesses, not a single person. They're like, we're, we rest, we're done. So this kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier. So they say we are not going to testify. And then three defendants, so the three, the three main women start freaking out because they're like we want to testify we want to testify what are you talking about which causes the judge to pull counsel right so they go into uh -huh. counsel and all of their attorneys say that they still fully believe that their clients are under the influence of charles manson and that if they plan to testify they're going to testify that he was not involved in any way shape or form and that they were the only ones in, like implicated in this crime they had he had nothing to do with it they were and one of them i don't have the quote but he was basically like this is suicide like this is aiding and abetting a suicide mission if we let them testify because they were convinced they were still under his influence i'm like if that doesn't prove more guilt i don't know what does but right. obviously the judge is the only one that knows that right they pulled counsel so um, the judge has been our homie so far but upon returning, I mean, I guess this is still kind of helpful in terms of the conviction, but upon returning from counsel, the judge allowed the women to testify because he says the right to testify took precedent over their assumptions as their attorneys. So the women were allowed to testify and Agpins was the first one to be sworn as a witness, um, but her attorney refused to question her. <laughs> so <laughs> she gets up there and he's like, I have no questions you may leave that's funny i'm like well he's like he's like fine you want to go up there sit up there but yeah that is very clever because yeah, at that like, point, i'll give you the razzle not, dazzle yeah at that point then at least he's you know allowing her the opportunity but she probably didn't understand truly what the court system was or how it really worked she probably just wanted to say that manson wasn't involved right um so now it's November 20th, right? Manson surprises everybody in the court by claiming he wants to testify now, all of a sudden. He wants a chance to testify, which he did um, without a jury present. And the reason why they did this is so they could allow um, any potential 
excludable testimony regarding other co-defendants within the, uh, without, with, regarding any other co-defendants to be identified before they present this to a jury. So normally, as I think we're all kind of aware of like enough TV shows, or if you've had to go to court yourself, you usually do like a mock trial. You do with your attorney, you, these are the questions I'm going to ask you. What is your answer going to be? You do all of that kind of shit. And then you kind of go back and forth. Like, it's like, this is my attorney. This is the prosecution or whatever, whatever. They were like, we didn't do that with him because we didn't plan on him. Cause he was like, I have nothing to say when they arrested him. And he's like, well, I didn't do anything. So I have nothing to say. So now they're like, okay, he's kind of nuts. So we need to like, make sure he's not going to say anything that could cause objections and shit. So he does this thing without the jury present. They do all the stuff. And at the conclusion, oh, his, by the way, his, his testimony takes over an hour. This whole Jeez. testimony he wanted to do <laughs> takes over an hour. At the conclusion um, of Bugalo C's cross-examination of Charles Manson, um, Older, which is the, the judge, asks him if he now wished to testify before the jury. And Manson replies, and I quote, I have already relieved all the pressure I had. And then he turned and then he like left the stand. So he decides, no, I don't want to testify now. So he gets down off of the stand. And then as he's walking past like the counsel's table, he turns to his three co-defendants, which are the women. And he says, you don't have to testify now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, so you're proving like everybody's point. <laughs> I don't know if it was recorded. I didn't look it up, um, but they did in this fabulous article I read. I'll I didn't um, cite it last time, but I'll cite it at the end. They did a great job. Like they have the transcripts, so they have the transcripts of that mock thing. I just it was too much to put in here, um, so but it was really good because it was like a mock thing, and he didn't never end up doing it like officially. Could they even count that or no? No, that's why they had to do it without the jury present. Hmm. So like whatever he had to say, they were like, we can't risk you causing prejudice to the jury. So we have to hear what you want to say first, because as your counsel, I have to be able to tell you if you can or can't say that. Yeah. And then he decides, no, he doesn't want to. So it's now November 30th and trial resumes again. And Leslie Von Houten's lawyer doesn't appear at court. So we've already had the attempted murder of um, Bridget, Brenda, whatever her name was. And now Leslie Von Houten's lawyer doesn't show up. Uh, he disappeared over the weekend while on a solo camping trip uh, in some remote location of the Suspi Hot Springs um, outside of Los Angeles. Um, and they were like, that's kind of sus. Uh, he Very just totally sus. disappeared totally sus and um because he still had family members out and about and they're like they tried to kill someone already like he's probably dead they would end up actually finding his body four months later um at, i think it's like the bottom of like a ravine or a ditch or something but they're they've never concluded that the manson family had any involvement in it even though people have bragged about it but they never pinned it on anybody unfortunately so that happens now Manson's attorney, it's, he gets up to speak and his whole argument, the entire trial is this. The women committed the murders um, out of love with the mastermind behind everything being Tex Watson. So they're pinning everything on Tex. Like, well, he led these, which technically he did because Manson told him to, right? To prove his loyalty. Yeah. So he's going to do it. He's going to be like, well, he's the mastermind and the women out of love and whatever for Tex or the family are going to listen to what he tells them to do. So it's all them. It has nothing to do with my client. Um, and he also went on to say that Manson, so he's like, it's them, not him. And that Manson was being persecuted for his quote unquote lifestyle. So they're trying to persecute him because of the lifestyle he chooses to lead. And his argument would last seven days. So he takes seven days to do his whole argument in trial. We're now in 1971, uh, January 25th. Atkins, Van Housen, uh, and Krenwinkel, they show up. It's also the last day of trial. This is the final day of trial. They all show up with shaved heads. They shave their heads. 
after Manson showed up halfway through the trial after shaving his head. So it's kind of like an homage to him. So they, they shave their heads. Britney. They went full Britney. And mind you too, like I didn't say it, but we all know like they they cut their an X in their heads too to like honor him and everything like that. So they did that whole thing. They shaved their heads. Um, and after a week of deliberation, the jury found, and this is a week beforehand. So this is the final day, January 25th. The jury found, I'm surprised it took them a week, but the jury found um, all defendants guilty um, of each count of first degree murder. So each person was found guilty of each murder um, and each defendant was given the death sentence um, at the time. Manson, so as they're reading this, as the clerk is reading off all of the charges, right? Because they have to go through each person, each charge. So it takes a while. Manson yeah. cuts off the clerk and he shouts, and I quote, you people have no authority over me. And then Patricia Krenwinkel declares, and I quote, you have judged yourselves. And then Susan Adkins screams out, better lock your doors and watch your own kids. And then Leslie Von Houten complained, uh, the whole system is a game. So they're all just like cutting off the clerk and like shouting profanities, but those were kind of like, <laughs> whatever. And then after the verdict is read and everything that happens and they're leaving the courtroom, Adkins, Von Houten, and Krenwinkel, they're all like holding hands and they're laughing and singing and like smiling as they like, they leave the courtroom. Like that's like one of the most famous scenes, like them just like having a grand but they don't give a fuck. They, have, they don't give a shit at all. Um, and that's because I don't, I don't remember who it was, but one of them ended up saying either in a documentary later or to the police, like they weren't afraid of the death penalty because like Charles had convinced them that the spirit lives on after death. So there's like really nothing to be afraid of. So they were kind of like, whatever, I'm going to live after this anyway. So, you know, and this is why you don't do drugs, kids. And this is why you don't or join cults. Yep. Yeah, so that too. I should say, don't do LSD. Okay. Especially that one. Nothing good comes from LSD. Uh-uh. You fry every little brain cell you have. Mm-hmm. So I have a few more things to wrap up. Okay. Third time's a charm. I'm just trying to mummify myself in my blanket really quick because it is. Do it. All right. Burrito life. Go for it. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. So. They leave the courtroom laughing. We're going to jump ahead to 1972, which is literally one year later. California overturns the death penalty. So all of the Manson family um, had their sentences commuted to life imprisonment. Okay. Manson would be sent to the maximum security section of the state penitentiary in Conquerin, Conquerin, California. However, that's pronounced. It feels like it's really dark in here. Oh, well. It is what it is. Um, while there, he assaulted prison staff about half a dozen times during his stay. Obviously, contraband would be discovered um, in the chapel he worked in. So somehow he got a job at the in-prison chapel and uh, they raided his stuff <laughs> and they found contraband. And in that, I know it's kind of ironic, right? Um, yeah. I think there was a little bit of like, I'm going to make another cult, you know, they're already oh, religious. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, so they find weed in his contraband. They find nylon rope um, and a hot air balloon catalog. <laughs> what? Go, I mean, I don't know. I don't think that's contraband. Maybe the man just likes hot air balloons. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, but, he's, um, maybe he's going to create like a hot air balloon cult or something. They're going to just roam the skies, you know? Actually ascend to the heavens, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Literal ascend. <laughs> um, what, what, what would the so name be, though? It would be like the... Oh. Ooh, we got to find a cult name for a hot air balloon cult. Hot air balloon I, I would join that cult. That sounds like fun. <laughs> the oh, higher gosh. level, I don't know. No. I'll have to come up with one. Mm. Mm -hmm. Think on it and let me know. Okay. So 
1980, so we're going to jump ahead eight years, um, he published his book called Manson in His Own Words. So that's when that book was released. Um, he would be denied parole 11 times during his incarceration. The most recent denial was in 2012. Um, at, this is obviously before he dies on November 19th, 2017, at the ripe age of 83 um, of natural causes. So he had a very boring death. Hmm. He didn't get to rule the world. Oh, well. So far as he lived that long with the amount of drugs he probably did. I know, right? Like, that's just bananas to me because you know what? Like, I see patients and stuff like that, obviously, all the time that are like, man, I don't know how I got cancer. Like, I never smoked a day in my life and yada, yada, yada. Like, don't drink, whatever. And then it's like, they're riddled with cancer everywhere. And then here's Charles Manson, who does every drug probably imaginable every day and lives to 83. What kind of fucked up shit is that? I just think it's the phrase, the good die young. Yeah. Yeah, he did too much you know? devil, devil worshiping or something because like he just smoking that devil's lettuce. <laughs> hey, the devil's lettuce is not that bad, okay? No, it's not. It also sounds very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, praise the Jesus. Anyway, um, the women of the Manson family have in years expressed a deep remorse for what they have done. Uh, now that they've been able to break themselves of Charles Manson's influence um, and they, you know, can now think freely for themselves. They've done multiple interviews and there's docuseries and stuff about them, which is why I'm like, I would love to do like an, a bonus thing, whether it's a Patreon, a Patreon episode or not, just a fun bonus on the side, but like that could be its own whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um They've all, like I said, they've expressed deep remorse for what they have done, and they've all gone on to be um, model inmates, and they do a lot of volunteer and charity work. So they've kind of started to turn their lives around, but, uh, you know, not on the flip side, they've all been denied parole as well. So they were all denied their paroles. Uh, They're still incarcerated, except for Susan Adkins, who died in prison from cancer in 2009. So she passed on. Obviously, um, Kasabian was given immunity. So she's, I think somewhere I read, she had a child in like the nineties and like went to like live her life or whatever. I'm pretty sure she's in an interview somewhere, but whatever. Some not so fun facts about the entire Manson cults and the murders. Um, I said the trial was 225 days. So the trial actually took in that timeline that's actually nine months so it was a nine month long trial um and it's actually the longest and most expensive trial in american history so there's your not so funny fact on that Mm -hmm. put your tax dollars to work (laughs) um followers so the manson followers or other members that were dirt that were there during the trial but were outside of the courthouse they all sat outside the I'm like it literally was just like yeah okay so okay so and then like comfy spot so my computer died after I plugged it into charge (laughs) that's exactly what I needed (laughs) that's exactly Uh what I needed today (laughs) so yeah so now on my phone so welcome to the new angle uh, uh, uh. <laughs> we get a we get a full almost Darcy view. <laughs> get my microphone. Anyway, I dig that so, shirt. I like it a lot. My Adidas shirt. Yeah, your little crop top. Look at you. You know where I got I'm this? Where, I got this. Uh, the, I'm wearing uh, my crop I can't wait to get a crop hoodie. I love to use crop Honestly, dude, you know where I got this? Target, and it's like the softest thing ever. And it was like I think fifteen dollars. Oh, and they have really cute. They have really cute crop tops there right now too that are only five dollars. Like they're like your their basic V neck crop tees or whatever. Five dollars. And I'm like, sign me up. I got every color. We love. And like two of the black ones because you know black is life. So <laughs> black is that. So while while we're doing, I'm gonna have to pull my notes. See, this is why I'm happy that we have a like Google Drive because all my notes are in the Google Drive, and I can pull it up on my phone. <laughs> the power of technology. 
Um, so where I left off was people sitting outside. Yes. Oh, why aren't these nuts sitting up? Why do I have this hair that's just like, what, what is this thing doing? You, <laughs> what are you doing? Is it like, is it like a bump? Is it a bump? Yeah, it's a bump. Behind your ear. I know I play with my hair a lot, you guys. I'm very sorry. It's a habit. Like since I've been a child or was a child, I should say not been a child. I am an I mean, adult. I think, think we're all children on the inside. But that's <laughs> I am Never a grown ass woman. Never let your inner child die. <laughs> um, okay. All right, this is an updated note. Maybe this is nice. That's it like that. I'm really kind of curious. I apologize in advance if um Sean gets home and he decides to bust in here like the Kool-Aid man because he's in a really good mood. Oh, there we go. That's okay. This will be a fun one to like edit for you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am totally not looking forward to. I was literally thinking that I was like, you'll have to show me like all the little like bits that you have to take out of it. I'm just gonna take a screenshot. And you're just gonna see like 15 chops, just like back to back to back to back. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so as I was saying, um. So his followers that were supporting him outside during the trial, uh, they all sat outside of the courthouse with X's carved into their forehead. So it wasn't just the women that did it, his followers did it. Um, and three of the defense lawyers were jailed for contempt. So this is part of the reason why I was like, I'm not naming names. I don't care. I'm going to get confused. We're all going to get confused. Um, but one of those lawyers was also Manson's lawyer. So we're jailed for contempt here and there for doing stupid shit. I mean, people do stupid shit. Not surprising. Um, on, I actually like, took this from the article that the, the article that I used for the majority of the ending was called famoustrials.com. I also used heavy.com, but famoustrials.com had a really great, it was a great article about the trial of the Manson family. And I don't know how much that was you know, summarize, they did a great job. So if you want to read it, just go to famoustrials.com and pick it up. Um, but in November of 2014, so this comes directly from their article. So in uh, the, that, November 2014, the California Department of Corrections announced that it had received a request for a marriage license from, from their famous 80-year-old prisoner, Manson. Uh, his bride-to-be is... Afton Elaine Burton, a 26-year-old woman who was work who has worked for Manson's release. Talk her there. She was one of the people working for his release. Burton said, and I quote, I love him. I'm with him. There's all kinds of things, end quote. Uh, Deborah Tate, sister of the slain actress, Sharon Tate had a different take. She said, and I quote, I think it's insane. The devil is alive and well, which I'm like. So gross. he's still doing it, even when he was 80. But um, and then my last not so fun fact, which is probably the most morbid one, um, because my brain is fucked up. I did the math. So had Sharon Tate and her son lived, uh, she would be 79 years old today, um, and her son would be 53. So had they not been slain, they could be still living a very happy and active life. Um I already named all of my sources and all that fun stuff. So you can always catch us on TAKTV podcast uh, on Instagram and Twitter. Check us out on Facebook at Take Care of the Brunch. Our email is uh, TAKTV podcast at gmail.com. Website www.takeacillertoothbrunch.com. And don't forget to check us out on Patreon and Patreon for three bucks a month. You get bonus content and you get early access to all episodes on Fridays versus Sundays. Um, and we're kind of working on some little um, welcome to the welcome to the psych board swag. So join the fun. Join join the fun. So that's that, ladies and gentlemen, is Charles Manson and the Manson murders. Yay. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll insert we applause finally right did there. it. <laughs> <laughs> it just took two weeks for you guys. It took two weeks and a 7,000 technical issues. <laughs> All the edits. <laughs> Yay, me. I'm going to have to have giant, giant drink of pickles and margaritas. So. Yes. <laughs> uh. On that note, I'll say cheers to you guys. I'm sorry. Let me cheers. Do cheers. Tink. Wait, I got. Mm. Bye, Water. guys. Hydrate. Stay hydrated. <laughs>